And so we continue. So already we've established that God is our Father, and we are continuing to learn about prayer. Uh, and uh, when we are approaching God, we know who he is, and he knows who we are, and we know who we are as well to him. So that aspect, is, I think it's one of the most important. Imagine, like what we said, talking to someone whom you're not sure how they're receiving you. So already we have the confidence that when I am before God, I am already received as a child. When I just go on my knees, I'm already received as a child. Amen. So let's remember that, and that should never get out of our minds as we continue to pray. So um, as we are talking about prayer, I want us to remember some things which we are going to uh, remind each other. So tonight we are going to be talking about one aspect of prayer. I believe we are writing our notes as well. One aspect of prayer which is very important that a child of God has to remember. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, we have the permission to ask. Permission to ask. Permission to ask, okay? Permission to ask. God expects, actually, at some point in our prayer to ask. Uh, we have the platform of prayer, uh, and it's also a way where we can go to our Father to ask. There are some things in life that are not going to move unless we pray. There are some things that are not going to happen in your life unless you pray about it. There are some things that are actually waiting for you to take that thing into prayer and push it before God in prayer. Some things, we are not just talking about physical things. Even the things that you desire in the spirit. Even some things, there are some things you're going to learn to open your mouth and speak to God about it. Then and only then you're going to see movement in that area. But what I've seen is every time you take one step in any direction of your life about anything, I was saying this to someone, whenever you take the first step, you have now allowed God to come into it and then God takes you 10 steps further. If you do not pray about it, you're going to be taking snail steps. And you haven't really invited God into the situation. And you're going to be taking snail steps. And you're going to take a long time to reach. Unlike when you put an agent or an enzyme called prayer. So the moment you bring something before God, the spirit of acceleration comes into play. And you begin to see movement in that aspect. Even about your relationships. The moment you begin to invite God in it, things happen. Things, God begins to show you things you could not see alone with your blind, love blind eyes. As long as you have not invited God into it, and you're doing it by yourself, trust me. You have not yet invited him. So prayer permits God to get in and deal with whatever situation. So when you pray about something, you are inviting God to invade and to do what he can do. So you are doing what you can do humanly possible, but God puts his supernatural uh, speed, ability, even uh, vision into whatever you, you have invited him into, and you begin to see progress and victory in that problem, if it's a problem or situation. So going to God is actually allowing God to interfere. Amen. You are allowing God to interfere. So as long as you have not prayed about something, you are basically doing it on your own. You are doing it on your own, bro. <laughs> you are alone, no? You are doing it on your own. Your education, you are on your own. Your business, if you have not prayed about it, you are on your own. As long as you have not allowed God to interfere. So we have permission to go before God and ask. 
So going before God in prayer is also a sign of submission to him. It's a sign of submission to God as our father and as our king. It's a sign of trust. It's a sign of trust. It's a sign of surrender. Going before God in prayer about whatever you're going before God, you are surrendering that thing to God. And it's a sign of obedience because the Bible commands us to pray and all sorts of uh, things we are going to be speaking about uh, on obe obeying to ask. So 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says pray without ceasing. So it's also a sign of uh, uh, obedience. So there are many instances in the word of God where nothing would happen unless prayer was made about that thing. For example, in the book of, uh, is it Matthew chapter 11, when Lazarus died? And in that uh, story, when Lazarus died, Mary and Martha were there. They desired their brother to not have died. They wanted him to be healed. They sent a message to Jesus, and then Lazarus died. But when Jesus came, the moment he prayed, Lazarus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead because a prayer was made. We have instances where things do not happen until prayer has been made. We have instances where Jesus has to say a word for things to move. So there is power when you ask in prayer over anything. There is power. So uh, God expects us to take our situations, every single thing, in prayer to him. So right now, even as you are here in prayer session, do you have things in your life that you feel that they are not moving, they are stagnant? Do you actually have a situation right now? Think about it. Something that's been maybe stressing you. Have you actually prayed about it? Have you actually made time to sit down and say, I am going to go to God about this situation and prayed about it? Do you have a, a health issue that maybe you, you went, yes, to be prayed for. You went, yes, that's fine. Or you are believing. But have you actually invested prayer time in regards to that thing? Have you actually taken and spent quality time about that problem and focus on it? So when you pray about something, we shift our focus from the problem and we begin to focus on the solution, who is God? So we begin to focus on God solving it. Do you have right now, even as you are here, even in the month of June, a desire? Maybe you can't meet that desire. But in your heart, you're feeling, oh, I wish only this. You are, you, you are full of wishes, bro. You are full of wishes. I wish, hey, hey, hey this one, Canada, Canada. Have you actually prayed about it? Have you actually gone before God? And actually prayed about Canada. Have you actually? We are full of wishes, desires. I want, I desire, I will, I shall. Actually invest time and tell God in prayer. Some of us have good needs, which we can't meet. Some of them, they are pending needs, which we know that right now, I've got this need, but I'm not able to meet it. So what do you do? You are hoping someone will be raised by God to come and help you to meet that need. Or you are hoping that someone will just think of you. You're just hoping. But have you actually taken that need and bring it before the throne of grace, before God, and begin to travel in prayer? about that particular need. Some of the needs, we cannot meet them ourselves. And there are some needs that we have, myself included, that money will not buy. That no matter how much money you can have, that need can only happen supernaturally. It needs things to move for it to happen. We have needs. Maybe you're desiring this to happen, this to happen. Maybe in that area, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know it. Some of you are desiring for that phone call. You can't pay money for it to happen. You're desiring for that email to happen. You're just wishing. 
I'm, I, you keep checking your email every minute. You check your phone every minute. Have you actually asked God, take that desire, that need, and say, God, I am expecting an email. There are offices I cannot reach. I am asking you to go where my feet cannot go. And I'm asking you to take my application, put it on top, and I'm I want to receive an email with a favorable answer. So, in the month of June, we are ceasing to be wishers and desirers and needers, just becoming people who go before God with our needs in prayer and God making it happen. Do you understand? Learn to depend on prayer. Learn to be totally dependent on prayer. Such that you feel like what I'm telling you, that as long as I have not prayed, nothing is going to move. As long as I have not prayed, it's going to remain where it is. Just like if you do not make your bed, no matter how far you go, you can't bake it like that. If you do not put a pot on the stove, water, everything, if you do not take action in your house, you will come back to an empty pot, empty house. Take that kind of uh, illustration to say as long as I have not pegged my things and put them before the throne of grace in prayer, I have not yet wanted to start seeing change or movement. Say amen. amen. So in prayer, we can present our request before God. There are times when we are bothered. There are times when we are worried. Some, some, some of us right now, we are stressed to the core. Stressed to the core. Like it's stressing you. That situation is stressing you. It's stressing you such that when you, when you try to be happy, it comes back to, you know, to your eyes. And you can't be happy to the fullest. And we are saying that thing is bothering us. So let's go to Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god and what will happen the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus so life does not always take a straight route life does not always actually life is not a straight route Life does not always bring results the moment you think if I put A plus B, I'll end up in C. You can go to A and then you jump B. You jump C. You find yourself at E going round and round and round then come to C eventually. But there are times when things don't happen the way we think they must happen. But what happens is then we get stressed. But God says, in all that detour and roundabout, be anxious for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Don't be anxious. When you see that one plus one did not bring two, don't be anxious about it. When you see that uh, you did not go straight to where you thought you were going to go, don't be anxious about it. You thought you'd graduate this year, don't be anxious about it. You thought you'd get your money this year, don't be anxious about it. You thought you'd get your certificates this year, don't be anxious about it. You thought that you would have, um, you would be in another nation this year, don't be anxious about it. You are not supposed to be anxious for anything. Nothing. Your health is not the way you thought it would be. Don't be anxious about it. What is the solution? In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. So the question is, have you made whatever is making you anxious, have you made it known to God? Come on, come on. Have you made it known to God? Because when you now make it known to God, he then brings his peace, which surpasses all understanding. Because he's getting ready to bring the solution in his time, in his way, but you no longer stress even though the answer has not yet come. 
So here Paul is telling the Philippians that there is nothing that qualifies our energy of stress. As long as we bring it before God in prayer. So instead of uh, chatting about it, try praying about it. Instead of WhatsApping about it, try praying about it. Instead of uh, Instagramming, try praying about it. Instead of Facebooking it, try praying about it. Some of us, our status is no more problems than our needs. Instead of crying about it, like what we learned yesterday with David and his men, instead of just crying and weeping about it, try praying about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the route to depression for a child of God can be avoided. The route to depression... I, I'm not by any means saying there's no depression. It's very real. Yeah. Depression is there. And if you have it, seek counsel. Seek counsel so that you are salvaged from such a deep pit. But I am saying, before it gets to depression, that thing that's stressing you, try taking it to God in prayer. And stop being anxious about what's going to happen. And what God does, he takes away the anxiety and he brings peace. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 11. This is one of the first scriptures I learned as a child. I learned it in Shona when I was so young. If you don't know this scripture, you, you need deliverance. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone, everyone. Do you see that? Everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. What man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, he's going to give him a stone. Or if he asks for fish, he will give him a serpent. If you, then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give good gifts to who? To those who what? To those who what? Ah, say it louder. If you're online, answer me. <laughs> to those who what? Not to those who are just wishing. Not to those who are just wish. I wish, I, I, I want soft life. <laughs> I want to live soft. I like nice things. I just like nice things. I like beautiful things. Your father is going to give you, I like that word, good things. Good things. What is good things to you? Good things. Is it visas? Is it good accommodation? Is it re good relationships? Is it good marriages? Is it good grades? Huh? Is it uh, good clothes? Is it soft life? Your father will give you good things when you ask your father. Why? Because he says, the fathers that I gave you if, you, give, if you ask for fish, they will give you fish. And they are so bad. They are very bad fathers. It's there. He said they are evil. The fathers I gave you, when you ask for bread, they are not going to get a stone. As bad as they are. So you can't think me as a heavenly father. That you ask me. You ask me, God, I'm ready to marry. Show me a good wife. I give you a chikota bear. <laughs> no. If you ask me, I give you good. Yes. I give you good. Yes. So you're not going to ask me uh, for a wife. And I give you a knife. He's not 
going to give you the opposite. So you ask him for a wife, he gives you a wife, not a knife. You ask him for a husband, he's not going to give you chimuji. Oh, those ones. He gives you what you're asking him. Your father. And, you know, one thing I like is, he's not saying ask your sisters, your brothers. He says, me, come to me, ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. You have permission to ask. You have permission to ask. You are expected to ask. God is waiting for you to ask. Can I read this same scripture in the message? Is it okay? Okay, let's read the message translation. Even if you say no, I was going to read it. <laughs> okay, but I asked, right? Yeah, yeah, keyword ask. Don't bargain. So it's Matthew 7, verse 7 to 11 in the message. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse. Hide and seek game we are in. If your child asks for bread, do you trick him with sawdust? If he asks for fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You are at least decent to your own children. So don't you think the God who conceived you in love will be even better? Did you understand this translation? It's deep, bro. It's deep. Matthew 20, verse 32. Jesus said to the two blind men, what do you want me to do for you? We say he is omniscient, which means he knows everything. He actually knows your needs. There are instances where actually he can tell you before. But here there are two blind men following him everywhere. He goes into the house, they follow him, he goes there, they follow him. And then he says, and they're shouting, have mercy, have mercy. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? It seems unreasonable, right? Like, you, I mean, duh, we are blind. Okay? At least we are blind. You, you can see that we are blind. But Jesus says, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Someone here is saying, God, you can see. <laughs> Father, you can see my situation. You can see. Ah, uh, you can see. You know it all. You can see, you know it all. He's your father. So he says to this in verse 22, what do you want me to do for you? It seems like a strange and obvious question, but Jesus did ask it. In 1 Kings 3, verse 5 to 14, if you read that whole story, I remember with the ladies, we did a whole season of, of, of talking, of reading it every day. Do you remember, ladies? We read it every single day when Solomon was asked by God, in a dream, God said, ask me what you wish to give you. God said, this is God talking to, um, to Solomon. He says, ask me. It's a blank check, guys. It's a blank check. No limits. Ask me what you want. Ask me. Come, ask me what you want. And with the knowledge of God that you have. So Solomon said, I want to be able to have understanding. He said, you, you dealt graciously with my father as he was ruling Israel. I want to be a good king. I want understanding. And guess what? He asked for something that money could not buy. And God gave it. There has never been and there never will be a king like Solomon with wisdom, in terms of wisdom. The Bible says, no one will be as wise as Solomon. The book of Proverbs that we read daily, it's Solomon. He was given a blank check by God. I believe that the month of June is here. It's a blank check 
to say it's our month of prayer to come to God with what we want. In John 5 verse 6, Jesus goes to the, uh, to the place in Bethesda. By the way, it's not Bethsaida. Because we have Bethsaida, but this is Bethesda. You understand? With the five porches. And this man in, at Bethesda with a situation of 35 years. And we, we hear Jesus seeing that he's at a place where people are looking for answers. So you may be here in church. You may be saying, yes, you are, you, you, you are at the right place. Yes, you are. But is your mouth opening? Jesus says, this question, and people always say, um, the men didn't know how to answer what, what, what. We have different preachers with different tastes. Jesus says, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And I believe that's something that Jesus is saying to others, some of us here. Do you actually want to get well? Do you want? Do you actually want money? Do you want that money? Do you actually want to come out of that situation? Jesus is asking you today. Do you want that, uh, that cancellation of that debt? Do you want to get well? Do you want your situation to change? Jesus is asking, do you want? Do you want that car? Do you want that license? Do you want that visa? Do you want? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? So Jesus asked in verse 6, do you want to get well? And it's obvious because th that's why I'm here. That's why I'm actually here, waiting. That's why he said, you know what? I, I just, of course I want, but I can't get anyone to push me into the water when the angel comes to stir the water. I, I don't have anyone, but I want, but I have no one. So the question seems obvious, but God knows and sees, but he wants you to say it. So when we honor God in prayer by submitting our request before him, he honors with an answer. He honors with a response. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer you. So you are not going to see vice versa in other situations. You're not going to see an answer before the call. The month of June is a month of calling. The month of June is a month of calling. We are halfway in the month of June. Have you been calling? Have you been calling yet? Or are you breakfast every day like never before? Are you seeking God like never before or eating like never before? Are you calling like never before? Because I think Jesus should come to your house to ask some of you with the way you are doing your things and ask you, do you want things to change? Because the way you are not praying, but your heart is full of wants, I think he is, he is coming to you even right now, whispering to you, it's you, do you want to change? <laughs> so, we are really expecting for him to answer before we call. But he says, call unto me and I will answer you. Then, the, the moment you call, he takes over and he shows off. He says, and I will begin to do great. And mighty things, which you don't even know. But what I want you to do is call me, eh? Call me. Call me. Then I will answer. You want to see great, but you are not calling. You want to see mighty, but you are not calling. You got it wrong, bro. Call to him. Hallelujah. So this month of June... You and I are going to go in faith with every issue. So what am I saying? Take your pad, uh, your writing pad, or your journal, or your diary, whatever. 
Write down the things you are believing God for. Those are your prayer items. Write down your request that you are believing God for. Don't leave anything. Spiritual things and physical things and social things. Everything you want God to change in your life. Write them down, all of them. And then go before God one by one. If you don't finish, you have another day tomorrow. If you don't finish, you have another time tomorrow. As long as you have presented it before God, you are going to begin to see movement in that area. Some stagnation is because no prayer has been made in that situation. Don't leave anything. So we're going to see now what he says in his word. Which, before we pray, because we are about to pray, we are going to if you remember, you're going to court, but already we are declaring that this room is a room where we have come with our request before the king. And because we are going to say, you said in John 14 verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. So we are asking in the name of Jesus. Then John 14 verse 14 says, ask anything. Anything in my name, I will do it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So we are asking in the name of Jesus and we are believing that we have them. Matthew 21, 22, Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Whatever things you ask in prayer, guys. In prayer. Luke 11, verse 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. We are going to ask what we desire. What you desire. Don't hold back and don't even shy. Be shy. Don't. Don't even, you know, hold back and say, ah, if he's my father, what if he thinks this is not right? John 16 verse 23. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. First John 5 verse 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And you know when you go in prayer, you get to understand also what God is, is saying about that situation. That you are asking him. Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. Are you asking God even about nations? Ask. Ask him. He says, I will give you. I will give you. I'm just going to go with the flow and then I'll see where the flow takes me. <laughs> I'm just going to ride with the flow and then I'll just see. I'll just, just one day at a time, just one day at a time. And that one day will turn to one week, to one year, to five years. You are still going with the flow. To ten years. You have not said anything to God. You have no desire. You have no urgency. You are, you are so complacent. You are okay. Matthew 18, verse 18 to 20. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Guys, where does the binding begin? Did you hear the scripture? Are we together? Whatever you bind, where? Whatever you bind, where? Whatever you bind, where? It will be bound, where? So who starts the binding? That's you. You bind on earth. Then heaven reciprocates. 
Then heaven says, yes, 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 yes. Heaven is going, it's not going to be binding things for you. No. Heaven is not going about binding things for you. You are the one who refuses things. You are the one who binds. And the Bible says whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. It's you who opens your mouth and begin to lose some things. And then heaven reciprocates. So when heaven is acting, it's because there is somebody somewhere who has prayed. When heaven is doing its things, it means there is someone somewhere who started to make things move. Many people are saying, is God blind to this? Is God not seeing this? Where is God when this is happening? But God even said, if my people who are called by my name just humble themselves and pray, I will from heaven hear and I will heal their land. But the people are busy talking. Where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Bind things that you're not happy about. Loose things that you want loosened. Bind and loose. Bind and loose. And heaven reciprocates. Then the Bible, the same scripture says, truly again I say to you, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. This is even the season to find friends to agree with in prayer about your needs. This is the season. There is power even of agreement. To say, friend, do you have prayer requests? Me, I've got. Let's just pray prayers of agreement. Because when we agree, whatever we agree right now, it's going to happen. Because sometimes by yourself you can't agree, right? You can't agree by yourself. So there are some things that you're going to need a friend, a brother, a sister. Can you help me pray? Me, I believe in prayers of agreement so much. So, so much. So much. And the Bible says you agree on earth, on earth, here on earth. Not those spiritual people. The ones who are agree. It's you and me while we are still in this flesh. John 14, verse 13, we've said it, and 14, we've said it. So tonight, we want to present ourselves before God. But moving on, I want you not to waste the opportunity to go before God. We have been given a blank check to say, ask anything. There is no scripture that says, this, 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 this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do that. The scriptures we read are so clear. Whatever you ask, whatever you agree with, what, ask anything in my name. So are you ready to see movement in your life? Are you ready to see some things changing in your life? I want you to go back to the drawing board where you started desiring things and you shelved them because nothing was happening, but you never prayed about it. Bring them back to the drawing table and begin to pray about those things. And they're going to see God because you're now saying God interfere and begin to do something. And God goes to places where you can't go. Your prayer goes to offices where you can't go. Your prayer goes to the hearts where you can't go. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. God can turn any man's heart to work to your favor. God can go into people's hearts and make them change their, where their stand on a situation. If he can turn the heart of a king, he can turn the heart of anyone. Singers, please come. So we are going to sing. And we are, everyone is going to open his or her mouth. Myself included. I say, God, today I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. God, I just want you to know how I'm feeling about this situation. 
I want you to just understand what I'm feeling about this situation. Because I want to see movement. And I am standing on your word. We are standing on the word of God to see change. We are standing on the word of God. We are not standing on the word of men. But we are standing on the word of God. And we are praying in the name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to the name of the Lord and they are safe. So we are running to the name of the Lord. Where we find our safety, our answer and our refuge. We do not have to stress too much. But we just have to pray too much. So people of God, whether at home or online, we're going to take these next few minutes. The prayer points are, you have the prayer points. You, yourself, you have the prayer points. According to the word which you have heard today. If you're going to pray a prayer of saying, I trust you, God. I love you, God. I'm believing you, God. I'm declaring this in my life. If you're going to pray a prayer of supplications and requests, making them known to God, it's up to you. If you're going to make prayers of healing, yes, this is the time. Prayers of provision, this is the time. Prayers for protection, asking God for protection, saying, God, I cannot go without you. I need you to protect me. This is your time. Saying, God, my business has been stagnant or failing for a while. Now I'm saying, hands off myself and hands on to you. I'm tired of using my own mind because the word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The word of God does not end there. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If you have not acknowledged him, it's not going to direct anything. If you have not acknowledged him, it's not going to direct anything. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, God, I'm acknowledging you in my education. Then he begins to direct your education. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God, I'm acknowledging you in my finances. Then he shall begin to take over the runnings of your finances. God, I'm acknowledging you in my relationships, in my marriage. Then when you're acknowledging him, then he begins to direct that area. God, I'm acknowledging you in my health. I cannot do without you. With long life, you shall satisfy me. My heart, my heart aligned with the word of God. My lungs align them with the word of God. I'm acknowledging you in my health. Then he begins to direct your health. As long as your ways are acknowledging God, he directs those ways. If you don't acknowledge him, you are not saying interfere. You are on your own. You are on your own. Are you guys ready to pray? Are you guys ready to pray? So we are going to take the next few minutes. You have the prayer points. I want you to approach your father tonight in this prayer room. I want you to go before him, trusting him that it's beginning to move. Things are going to change. Shift is going to happen. Shift is going to happen. And I want you to open your mouth and pronounce the thing. Pronounce it with your words. And quoting the word of God which says, ask anything in my name. Ask anything in my name. Say, God, you said anything and I'm believing you for this. So whatever you are asking, I am believing that God is going to do it for you.